welcome inside the Meaford St. Vincent Community Center where tonight the Knights of Meaford get set to take on the South Muskoka Shield, a matchup which will end the regular season home schedule for the Meaford Knights and likely sets up what will be a first round playoff matchup against the same South Muskoka Shield. My name is JC Coots, joined alongside tonight by Christine Wyville, who is a very special guest tonight. The Junior Farmers, along with the Canadian Mental Health Association, will be recipients of money raised at this game. One thing you'll notice once the game gets underway is that the Meaford Knights are wearing special jerseys tonight. Jerseys inspired by our for farming and agricultural um, organization and industries here in Gray and Bruce counties. Uh, Christine, I'll ask you this, the junior farmers, uh, tell me what you do with the junior farmers. So this year I'm actually the agricultural contact, which means that I talk to the beef farmers of Ontario for Gray County, the Dairy Farmer Committee, and even Gray Federation of Ag. And I help them out and sit on all their committees. That sounds like a very busy job. How, <laughs> how long have you been part of the Junior Farmers? Um, I have been a part of Junior Farmers probably going on 11 years now. Mm -hmm. And it's an organization, I'm guessing, where uh, it's pretty much lifetime membership. Once you once you join, you're in forever. Pretty much, yeah. You can be as young as 15, and then once you're 29, they kind of say, mm, maybe you should take a take a little break. <laughs> well, I know that the uh, the jerseys tonight look fantastic. Did uh, Did you or any member of the Junior Farmers have anything to do with the design of the jerseys that are being worn tonight? Um, we had input, but I did not have anything to do with the actual designing of them. Well, they're going to be auctioning off these jerseys after the game tonight. Proceeds going, of course, to the Junior Farmers and the Canadian Mental Health Association. Volunteers from both organizations working tables out in the lobby tonight. And, of course, if you're watching the game after the fact at home and you want to support either one or both of those organizations, make sure you reach out to them and make a donation. We are going to send things down to ice level now. Both teams are out, and we will turn it over to Minor public address announcer Fred Walters. Connor Adams is our seventh attacker. Please welcome Jacob Almas. Please welcome Bryce Brook. And Piper Brook. Here comes Angus Downey. Now let's welcome Ella Hurst. And up next, Meadow Hurst. Now let's welcome to the ice surface, McLean Knight. On the ice surface next, Carson Lucier. Jaden McLean. It's a pleasure to welcome tonight the great Sawyer Ratcliffe. Uliam Thompson. Up next, Ludovic Menard. Here comes Emery Lewis. Kathleen Lewis. Sierra Campbell. And Peyton Lewis. Please welcome your Knights for a night. We want to welcome everyone tonight to the game and we want to thank the Gray County Junior Farmers as they present Country Night for Mental Health. The Gray County Junior Farmers provides opportunity for youngsters aged 16 to 29 of all backgrounds but especially those from rural Ontario to take the challenge of exploring their individual talents and potential to develop personally while being involved in bettering their communities, networking and most of all having fun. Junior Farmers' mission is to build future rural leaders through self-help and community betterment. Tonight, the Junior Farmers are looking to raise funds and awareness not only for their association, but for a charity that is very important to them. The launch of Agricultural Mental Health Wellness Program, a suite of programs designed to ensure farmers are getting mental health and mental health support when and where they need it. 
living in rural areas and the stigma surrounding both mental health and rural living can make it more difficult for farmers to seek help. Agriculture Wellness, Ontario's new site, is designed to make it easy to seek support and increase mental health literacy from one starting point. Please see the CMHA booth in the lobby tonight for more details and again we thank all involved. At this time we would like to welcome to Centre Ice from the Canadian Mental Health Association board member and Knight's Billet, please welcome Sean McMurray. Also joining us, the Gray County Junior Farmers President, Jacqueline Glover. And representing Bayside Jeep Dodge Ram Chrysler, Jeff Oliver. For our ceremonial face-off tonight, we would ask the captain's representative from the Shield and our Knights Assistant Captain, Adam Pollock, to please come to center ice for our ceremonial face-off. Our thanks to The Shield and to Adam. And again, our thanks tonight to Sean McMurray, Jacqueline Glover, and Jeff Oliver, and many thanks to all who have been involved in making this event a big success and a bigger success as the night unfolds. Fans, hockey is Canada's national winter sport, and so at this time we ask that you please rise and remove your caps and sing along as we present our national anthem from the Meaford Culture Foundation. Tonight, O Canada is being presented by Olivia Buckton. Buckton and the two young hockey players that were next to her out there they might want to keep their gear on South Muskoka might need their services this game your eyes did not deceive you only 10 skaters for the shield have made the trip here tonight as the uh, junior skaters who were on the ice during player warm-ups make their way off We'll get set to go for what will be the final regular season home game for the Knights of Meaford this season. They will finish up the season on the road on Saturday, traveling to Gravenhurst to take on the same South Muskoka Shield. Let's go with the starting goaltender. There you see number 33 in net for the South Muskoka Shield. That is Yaroslav Chabanu. Saw him the last time that he was in town with his teammates. He has the lion's share of minutes played for the Shield. 8 and 17 record for him this season. 5.9 goals against average and an 878 save percentage. He does have two shutouts on the season. At the opposite end, Robin Larson getting settled in. He made some big saves last night, or sorry, last Thursday in that game against West Nipissing. 14, 11 and 0, his record. 4.0 goals against and an 890 save percentage. 
And very quickly, things get stalled here at the Meaford St. Vincent Community Center as we get an icing to pause things early in this opening period. Knights get a face off down inside the South Muskoka zone off the draw. It's picked up there by Crow. Crow whips it around the board. Sorensen now. He's currently the leading scorer out there for the South Muskoka Shield. Tom Bricks out of the game. 26 goals for him. The only member of the team that's found the net. Back of the net more than 20 times this season. Knights trying to go to work early. Filardo now. Quick shot. That one glove down. Oh, Chibanu showing very early on that he is sharp tonight. That is Flanagan that made that one shot. Christine, the junior farmers, you got to see the opening ceremonies there. Junior farmers well represented. Who was the young man that was out there for the puck drop? That was actually Logan Saunders. He's a, a new member this year. Okay. Well, he, even though he's a rookie, he got the big honors tonight <laughs> dropping the puck on behalf of the junior farmers, which was great to see. Puck down inside the night zone now. It's picked up there by Wado. Wado, there's a long lead pass trying to send Kopech, but that was broken up. That was, I believe that was Reeves in at the last second. Whistle goes here. Official indicating we've got a slashing call coming. And this one's going to go against South Muskoka. Meaford very quickly going to their first power play opportunity of the game as Danny Downing heads off. Two for the slash. Meaford's power play had a lot of opportunities last Thursday, but we're unable to capitalize. They go to work early now. Wado in the corner plays that one off the boards. Picked up by Sapino. Luciano Sapino has it on the boards. Laid it down low. There's a centering oh. feed. Sapino, the older one. Alessandro just missed that opportunity. He's got it again. There's a shot gloved down by Chibanu. Puck played behind the goal. Alessandro Sapino back on the point it goes. Across now, walking in. That's Sapino in the corner. Siebert on the point, watches Wado. He plays it back. Siebert there in the slot, trying to go to the backhand. He got dumped by Reeves. Puck down the ice for Juracek. Takes a look to see where his teammates are. He'll carry it out, plays it up now. And this is Sapino with some speed down the wing. Off the end boards, Wado was just out of his reach and might have a chance the other way now for the shield shorthanded here. As Crow smartly turns back to his own zone. Happy just to kill some more time, but he almost gave it away there. Knights will have to come back down to their own zone to regroup. Puck played across by Flanagan. Down the wing now, Polak. Polak taken down there. May have just lost his footing. I'm not sure if that stick affected him. Now Flanagan on the point. Thought about a shot. Shooting lane got blocked, but to Kopak. Kopak walks in, hits shot, save made by Chibanu. Opposite side now, Reedy's plays it back for Flanagan. He walks in, save is made. Bouncing puck, Chibanu can't find it. Bounced over a night stick, still held and scores! Declan Flanagan! Life finds a way, the Knights are up 1-0. Well, it's about time the power play clicked for the Meaford Knights. Declan Flanagan on the point. The shield trying to get this puck out. Couldn't get it by Flanagan. He finds that top corner. And the Knights go up 1-0. Near capacity crowd in the building. Very happy to see that one. But right away, DeConti going back to work now. DeConti is centering feet. Shot scores! Braden Mitchell. Right away, South Muskoka ties this one. No time for the Meaford Knights to celebrate that one as Braden Mitchell very quickly ties this one up for Braden Mitchell. Sure where that puts him in scoring. I believe that was goal number 28 on the season for Braden Mitchell. Pocket center. Here's a chance now. Mitchell again with it. Mitchell 
put on the brakes and had it stolen away by Reedy's. Now Reedy's has got some speed. Three on two the other way for the Knights. And that one broke it up right at the shield line. Here's a move now the other way. Walking and Polak and that one gloved down by Trevanu, who again is showing that he is sharp tonight. Maybe the difference maker here for South Muskoka, but we're all tied up at one with less than four minutes gone. Christina, pretty exciting start to this game. It is. I mean, that was pretty quick back-to-back -back goals. That was. We don't see that happen as quickly as that uh, just happened normally, but we'll see what happens now as Crow gains the line. Crow stood up there by Flanagan. Kopech lost it in his skates. He's got it back. Takes a look up ice. Throws it ahead there. Polak with a hip check. He got knocked down, but Wado in with a shot, and that is saved by Chibanu. I don't know that I'd be okay with getting hit like that. <laughs> well, in this case, none of the Knights teammates are jumping up for Adam Polak. I think they're, they're fine to not take a penalty on this one. Off the faceoff. Polak digging for it. Puck held in by Biggs. Rings it around the boards. Wado in the corner. He plays it out. That's where Polak is now behind the net. Polak got checked there. Doughty knocked him down. Back the other way. Knights trying to gain control in their own zone as Biggs finds it in the corner. Played it up the boards. It's out to center by Polak. He's trying to find it. Can't though. Now it's turned back by Sorensen. Sorensen in over the line. Tried to make a move. He does. Set up Mitchell, who just missed. Sorensen in the corner. Checked there by Biggs. Now he plays a play, and that one shot wide. Went off the end boards all the way down the ice. Great chance there for Crow. Chibanu out to play it off the glass. It goes. That's a Pino ahead for Kopech at center. Siebert. Tried to find the handle on that one, missed it. Here's a giveaway, Sapino shot just wide of the goal. Oh, a golden opportunity on the giveaway by Doughty. Puck takes a weird bounce off the shield boards there. Alessandro Sapino gets stood up. Siebert just threw a big check in his legacy now. Puck broken up there by Crow. Shield will get it ahead to center. Sapino coming in to dish a hit, but Back the other way now, it's Crow. Crow got a man with him, DeConti, trying to fight it to skates. It's cleared now, and here's a chance for Sapino the other way. Sapino in, glove down by Chapin, who saw that one in all the way from about 80 feet out and made no mistake in holding on. 1-1 here in the first period of play in Meaford. Christina, have you been to a lot of Knights games in the past before? Um, I actually used to come a lot when I knew people playing, but I haven't known people playing the last couple years, so. All right, say some names who you knew. Uh, any Knights fans watching at home will probably instantly recognize some of them. Who did you know on the team? Um, I'm pretty sure Matt Fleming played. Matt Fleming, okay. <laughs> and we, have, we have a goal. Sorry, Christine, at the side <laughs> of the goal. I think everybody's a little bit surprised by that. It looked like there was a whistle initially. Reedy's. The beneficiary skating to the bench to get high fives from the teammates. We'll see this on the replay here. Starts with a shot by Wado. Reedy's just took a slash on that sharp angle shot, and it somehow snuck in between the post and Chibanu, and uh, the Knights are up 2-1. South Muskoka looking to maybe jump back quickly here again. They scored within 15 seconds last time. Here they go again. This is Crow. He's hauled down. Back ice official immediately puts the arm up in the air. Tripping is indicated. And South Muskoka will go to their first power play opportunity of the game. South Muskoka coming into this, working at a 17.2% effective rate on the power play. Not the greatest numbers. Meaford, meanwhile, their penalty kill has looked good. 87.3% on the season. Both teams go to work, and Meaford starts by getting the puck down the ice. Crow back to play it, makes a move there. Make that caller. That center caller lost it. It's picked up by Crow. 
Crow made a move in the line, trying to get around DeMules. Crow still has control. Back on the point it goes. Now Caller with it. Walks in, point shot kicked out by Larson. DeMules trying to play it, couldn't get it past Caller on the point. Here's a chance now. Goes to Crow on the wing. Crow hits the end boards. Puck picked up, not out though. Biggs was trying to get it out, lost it to skates there. That one backhanded wide. Crow tried to make a move right on the goal line. Little nifty backhander between the legs, but Larson didn't fall for it. And it stays 2-1 Knights here with 1.14 remaining on the Shield power play. Mitchell will head out. He's already scored once for the Shield. He'll take this draw. Piper Post lining up opposite him. Post won the draw. Controlled there and shot all the way down the ice. Nice play by Flanagan. Did they get that one the length of the ice? Back to it now is Kohler. Kohler almost had some trouble there. Feels the pressure by Post. Kohler away with it, though. He's over the line. Kohler turns back, sees Crow on the point. Crow down to Mitchell. A shot went off the side of the goal. Mitchell again. Back to Crow. Crow to the point. Kohler tried to feed it through. He was looking for Doughty in front, but that missed. Still in control here with 30 seconds left on the power play. There's a shot, that one wide. Doughty in from the point, backhands it right into Larson, who covers up and gets the whistle. 28 seconds left to go on this shield power play. Robin Larson, normally the difference for his Knights teammates. Knights will respond with Darcy Lowe to take the draw. Low won it. Knights get it out right away to center. Caller picks it up, plays it across. Oh, took a weird bounce off the stanchion on the glass there. Now Simona trying to get that puck out. Penalty about to expire. Crow on the point, though. His shot saved, made by Larson. They try to kick in it in, but Larson again gets the big paddle down on the ice and keeps the puck out. They will get one more face off with the man advantage. Just one second hanging on the clock. As soon as that is over, you'll see a member of the Knights very quickly trying to join the play and block things off the face off. Polak trying to tie things up. The point shot from Crow gets off, but goes right into the Meaford Knights logo on the front of that Junior Farmers jersey that Robin Larson is wearing, and he holds on. They did pretty good to kill off that power play. Excellent penalty kill for the Meaford Knights. Trying to get organized, though, in their own zone as Mitchell had it taken away from him. Turning back now is Flanagan. Puck ahead for Polak. Polak now. He's got a chance. Polak is shot, and... That was a wicked shot. Chibanu's glove wasn't even fast enough to pull it down. Biggs again from the point. That one blocked out front. Knights player dumped. That was Wado in front. No penalty. Those to Conti carries it across. He'll whip it around the Knights boards. Downing at the line. Tries to hold it in, but it went off a stick and out of play. So we'll get a whistle and a faceoff in front of the bench. Let's take a look at the scoring leaders now for the Meaford Knights. There you see Tomas Kupak on top, 69 points, leading the Knights heading into tonight's game. 33 goals for him, followed closely by Adam Polak. And Declan Flanagan, who scored already tonight, his 16th goal of the season right there in the conversation at number three. Uh, a great season as well for Alessandro Sapino. Uh, he has got 29 points for the Knights and Pavel Reedes, who's always fun to watch, especially with his speed out there in at the uh, number five position for Knights school scorers this season. Of course, in one week's time when we are playing game one of the first round playoff series, all of those statistics, everything that happened during the regular season, none of that will matter. 
both these teams will start fresh. Had an interference call against the Mefer Knights in that last go. So South Muskoka Shield now on the power play. Their second opportunity of the game as Mitchell carries it over the line. Dropped it off there for Doughty. Played it back to Collar. Collar. Cross he goes. Sorensen trying to find the tip out front by Doughty. That one didn't go. Collar now walking in. Shot high and wide. Sorensen holds it in on the other point. Now it's Mitchell playing it back to Collar again. Collar point shot and Larson gets it with the glove and holds on. About 44 seconds, give or take, gone so far on this power play opportunity. Quick face off, Crow wins it back. Mitchell, oh, almost intercepted there. Demules was looking for that and a short-handed opportunity. Wow, quick save made as Larson kicked that one out and then resets the post on its moorings. The Shield holding it in here, but Knights read that play. They take off two on one the other way. Here's a chance. Simona got a man with him. Shot out goes wide. Looking to tip it there was Flanagan. Now the two defensemen having to race back. Make that to Mules, who was part of that play. Big hit there by Lowe. Knocking down Doughty. Knights get it the length of the ice once again. Chibanu leaves it there for Caller. Caller looks up. He's got about 30 seconds to work with on the clock here. Caller plays it around the boards. Doughty looks back, finds Mitchell. Mitchell realizes he's got the mules all over him, so he plays it down low. Doughty down low. Caller on the point. That one almost broke it up as low slides in. Now your check. He got bumped in the corner, but he gets back up, and he's able to break up that play and get the puck just outside. Shield will have to come out to regroup. Mitchell now in the neutral zone. Penalty has expired. Knights are back to full strength as Larson plays that one ahead for Juracek, and now the Knights will come away. Salter ahead. He's over the line. Salter played that one across. Couldn't find anybody. Lindblom looking for it. Now it's Lindblom out to Salter. Salter had to go off the back skate. Couldn't find control. Here's to Conti now. He tried to gain the line, but that was broken up by Flanagan. At the line, Downing has some trouble, but he finds it again. Here's Downing. He's taken down. Nothing coming from the officials, though. Biggs in behind his own goal. Gets bumped there. Regains control, and... Knights will get it ahead. Two on two now. Back the other way. Puck shot into the zone. Salter along the boards. Takes some hits there from Reeves. Wado trying to help out. Played it back to Flanagan. And oh, Chibanu wasn't really paying attention there. Didn't see it to the last second and got a leg on it. Mitchell. Here he comes now. Trying to walk in from the top of the circle. That's broken up. Nice work by Adam Polak to come back. Now Salter trying to spring Wado. Got blocked at center. Reeves, he sees an opportunity. Sends Sorensen now. Sorensen for the shield. Shot right on to Larson. And Larson makes it look easy with 7.25 remaining in the first. Knights are up 2-1. to one. And a big thank you to Amici's here in Meaford. Enjoyed their pizza as we do, the volunteers, before every game of Knights Hockey on Rogers TV. If you're looking for the best pizza in Meaford, call 519 538 6805. Puck down inside the shield zone. There's a cross ice feed for Polak. It's played back by Kohler. Simona fires it inside the shield zone. Racing back to grab it is Stevens. Now the shield can't get it out. Held in at the line by the Knights. And after it, Simona. He got bumped there. Behind the goal, Polak just out of his reach. That allows the shield to get it ahead. And here's a chance for Doughty. Doughty with some speed, but Wado got back in time. Doughty trying to come out from behind the goal. Looks like someone has lost their stick in behind the net. 
Now sticks are back up, but play continues in the neutral zone here as Wado is digging for it. Kicked it back for Simona. Dump there was Polak. Now the Knights trying to gain the line again. Caller wasn't buying that one. Now here's Sapino. Got it over to Siebert. That was broken up very quickly by Downing. Now Downing trying to get a move made here. Ran out of real estate with Siebert. Siebert still. These two have been jarring back and forth for a few minutes. We'll see if something comes of that. Siebert again trying to find it. Now Polak kicks it ahead. Here's a sharp angle shot by Sapino that goes off the side of the goal. Everything looking a little bit bad news bears out there for both teams. Nothing seems to be connecting. There's a shot from Sapino. That's a long one that misses. Again on the point. That one wide from Calvert Getz. There's another point shot. That one took an odd bounce. Calvert Getz again blasts one through. And that one went wide. She'll get it out to center now. Mitchell elects to turn back. Sees his teammates changing. Wants to give them a few extra seconds to get set here but oh almost a costly error is very quickly three green Knights jerseys appeared on top of them now Kelver gets carries it from his own zone through center got around one man tries to make another move still has control plays it behind the goal centering feet that one almost paid off Demules was waiting for it here's Demules again trying to find the handle on it now it comes out front shield will get it out to center as Lowe quickly collects it there. Lowe now, he's got some trouble, but he makes the play ahead. Puck flipped into the zone by Croteau. Croteau after it, he plays it out, and that one took a weird bounce. Looked like Chibano got a piece of the blocker on it. Now in behind the goal, Lowe again. Puck takes another odd bounce as the Knights buzz the net. DeConti now back the other way. Shield hoping to convert a late opportunity here. They won't as it goes off a foot down the ice. DeConti. Oh, big hit on DeConti. Croteau. How you doing? Now outside the zone, Knights trying to turn another chance. Here's Reedy's in and wasn't able to get that one through. Reedy's gets bumped behind the goal. Biggs on the point, a shot through. Turned aside by Chibanu. Now walking in, Salter, he centered that one, but nobody found it. Again, Biggs tried to put a blast through, and it's broken up to Conti. Starting to skate away for a breakaway, but back ice official blows it dead. Indication here. I'm not sure they're calling this a hand pass. There is a penalty that's been placed on the board. This one's going against Reeves. It's been a physical force all night for South Muskoka. But behind the play there, takes away an opportunity for his team. What may have been a breakaway and an opportunity to tie this game. Instead, South Muskoka gets shorthanded and might find themselves down by two as the Knights' power play goes back to work. There's a point shot from Flanagan. That one was blocked. Reedy's now. He walks in, trying to find Polak. Polak just unable to connect with it. In behind the goal. Polak still has it, kicks it up to his stick. Kopech back on the point. Flanagan, oh, just misfired on that one. Kept it alive, though, to Reedy's. Reedy's. Try to play it down low. There's a chance. Polak's out of the goal. Save is made. Second save by Chibanu. Keeps it out. Shield will ice the puck here. Right on to Larson, who plays it ahead. See how fast the Knights move this one. This is Reedy's speed down the side. Taken down by DeConte. Picked up, though, by Kupak. There's a chance. Side of the goal. That one shot wide. Up the boards it is. DeConte now. He'll play it up there for... Caller, who's looking for a shorthand to break. Save is made by Larson. Now picked up and taken back the other way by Polak. He had some trouble there. Salter had to come back. And here's DeConte walking in now, shorthanded. 
Puck in the corner, he plays it back. There's another chance, kicked out by Larson. Loose puck, and here come the Knights. Could be one-on-one -on -one the other way. It's Kopech with it. Kopech makes a move, has help. Centered it, save made by Chibanu. That was Pollock there. Kopech's favorite target. They're going to try again. 30 seconds left on the power play, and they're stopped at the line. Juracek dumped, and he went down in a hurry. Penalty combing as a result of that hit. I don't think he saw that coming at all. Not at all. There you see Juracek. He doesn't have the puck anymore. This is clearly an interference and a checking to the head. How long will this be is anybody's guess, but... They would hate to lose Adam Juracek here. As we know in hockey, a player makes a pass, and you're never supposed to watch your pass, but at the same time, you can't catch that player with their head down or in any position. So we're just watching the clock at five, five, a five minute major goes up. No surprise based on that head to the head. So a big opportunity here with just under two minutes in this period for the Knights to do some damage. There's a centering feed. Now it's over to Zapino. He walks in, shot save, maybe Chip had a rebound. That goes wide. Flanagan. Across it goes. There's a chance that they walk in with it. Scores! This one time at band camp, the Knights are up by two. Take a look at it on the replay here as Flanagan gets it out to Sapino. Sapino sees his little brother streaking in. Pass over to Luciano, and he finishes this one. Knights up 3-1 now, and still remaining on the power play for the next four and a half minutes, regardless of how many times they find the back of the net. Play at center. Wado, down the left wing. Wado centered it there. Seabird, a shot, scores! Seabert! Get in, loser. We're going shopping. <laughs> Knights are up 4 1. It's quite the first period. It is quite the first period, and they're pulling out all the stops on Junior Farmers Night as Blaze Seabert tickles the twine. Oh, Seabird not done yet. Here he comes again. Seabird in. Oh. Scores! You had me at hello. It's 5-1 Knights. Back-to-back -back power play goals. And what was that, four seconds? Blaze Seabird right off the faceoff, picks up the puck and does it all by himself. No mercy. Can he make it three? He's already lined up on the right wing, ready to try it again. Well, the puck doesn't go to Siebert this time, but Knights have control quickly as over the line to Supino plays it over to his older brother. There's a centering feed, that one broken up. Puck will hit the mesh, and that will result in an automatic whistle. And maybe a second for all of us to breathe here. It seemed like a second ago it was just 2 1 Meaford Knights, but now it's 5 1. My watch is going off saying that my heart rate monitor is an issue. How about you, Christine? How are you feeling right now? I'm pretty excited. I mean, 5 1, and it's only the first period. How much damage can they do tonight as Kopech comes in? There's a shot, not one. Just went wide. Again, they try in the slot, and Polak missed that. Shield trying to get the puck out, and it looks like they were successful on this one. Icing will be the call, and we'll bring the face off just outside the South Muskoka Shield with 42.4 seconds remaining in the opening period. Knight's still in the power play, by the way, for the next 344. 
play continues here. They will have lots of fresh ice to work with when we get to period two. There's a shot, glove save made. Reedy's on the point. Now Kopech. Kopech got it across. Walking in, Simona finds Reedy's. Reedy's top of the circle, and that one went off a stick. And up into the rafters here at the Meaford St. Vincent Arena. 18.3 to go. Knights final regular season home game. They will finish out the schedule on Saturday in Gravenhurst against these same South Muskoka Shield. Puck played off the boards. Big hit there. Simona took that, but here's a chance again. Reedy's now to Kupek. Chance in the slot, and oh, Polak was looking for the one-timer there. There's another one. That blocked out front. Puck will come out to center, and that is where the horn will go to end the first period of play. Meaford Knights coming out on junior farmer night, and it looks like they're planting a bunch of goals in the South Muskoka net. We will take a break. We'll be back with the second period of play. You're watching me for Knights Hockey on Rogers TV. to Gray County Life on Rogers TV next week. We're going to find the updates that are happening at the Family YMCA. Calling all journalism students. Omni Television is once again awarding scholarships to qualified students pursuing a career in third language journalism. I think all journalism students and aspiring journalists should take the time to learn more about third language and ethnic journalism. And I think the Omni Scholarship is a great way to raise awareness on that. Omni is home to a variety of locally produced current affairs programs and daily national newscasts broadcast in six languages. To learn more about Omni Scholarships, visit omnitv.ca slash scholarships. Your mouth can do a lot of amazing things. And your mouth can save a life. Hi, I'm Tom Wong. I'm just one of close to 1,000 Canadians in search of a stem cell match. We need your help. A simple swab is all you need to register on the National Stem Cell Database. You could be the one to save a life. Find the hero in you. Are you the type who would keep going or stop? It's not easy to stop when you have an addiction. Legalizing cannabis won't stop addiction. It trivializes its consumption. Let's be vigilant. If you need help, visit portage.ca. And welcome back inside the Meaford St. Vincent Community Center where the Knights of Meaford had themselves a first period Scoring five times in the South Muskoka net. South Muskoka responded just once after Meaford's first goal of the game. Only a few seconds to tie this one at one, but it was three Meaford goals in just a couple minutes of play near the end of that first period that has made the difference. They are up five to one and still on the power play. Thanks to a five minute major penalty to end that first period. Blaze Siebert picking up back-to-back -back goals with it about five seconds now as the Knights gain the line. Pull like a shot, scores! <laughs> Cooper Salter, life moves pretty fast. If you don't stop and look around once in a while, you could miss it. It's 6-1 Knights. That was a whole 18 seconds into the second period of play. The me for night score for the third time on this five minute power play. And they are in business. Pull like ahead to Salter. Salter in it quickly again, gets his chance off, but that one turned aside by Trevanu. Now it's Pollock in front, backhander scores! Boy, that escalated quickly. It's seven one nights now. I don't think they're stopping anytime soon. No, they will not stop. Can't stop, won't stop. Adam Polak 
recognizes the opportunity here. Gets out front with it, a backhander. It looked like Chiban who got a piece of it, but it fell into the net behind him. That's four goals on the power play, just on this five-minute power play alone for the Meaford Knights, who again go back to work. Sapino breaking in now. He tried to center that one. Danny Downing turned it back there. Gets it out to center. This is Sapino now. Sapino at center, gains the line, got help with him, dropped it back there. There's a quick shot from the point. That one deflected out of play by Blaze Siebert. Hits the mesh and we get a whistle here with 18.33. And of course that rule kicks in in the GMHL. If a team is leading by six or more, the clock will keep ticking. I don't think, at least in, in our experience covering Thursday night games this season, we've seen a team be subject to that rule so early in a game. As Sapino takes a quick shot in that one, whips wide. Do want to mention, too, this should be noted as a little bit of miscommunication in front of the Knights' net there. Siebert bumped with his man. Do want to mention, it should be noted, South Muskoka did show up shorthanded tonight here with just 10 players on the bench. So having one away for that lengthy five-minute power play, no doubt is, is causing a little havoc over there with players unable to get full breaks. A full night's bench, though, you can see it on your screen. And their jerseys look awesome. They are the best jerseys in the league tonight, guaranteed. No doubt about that one. <laughs> Looking good in the... Is that John Deere green on that plan? Oh, I don't know if we're allowed to call it John Deere green, but... For legal purposes, it's not <laughs> a tractor. It's tractor green for legal purposes. There's a quick shot from the point in Shibanu. Again, hasn't had a lot of... Well, he's made some big saves tonight, but has found himself shorthanded a lot of the time. And that aforementioned power play by the South Muskoka Shield has just expired now. They are now back to full strength. At center, Polak. Polak got bumped there. Now it's Salter. He'll pick it up. We are five on five for the first time since the last three minutes of the first period. Puck shot ahead. Now here's a chance for the, for Dowdy, for the shield. He wired that one. Larson may have got a bit of it with a blocker. Knights at center now. Kopech for Polak. Polak. Try to make a move there. Plays it back for Kopech. Kopech going to try to walk in. Kopech has a man, Salter, just out of his reach. Now Polak behind. Polak walks to the top of the circle, finds a man on the point. Legacy is shot. That one wide. There's a rebound. That's cleared. Puck at the side of the goal. They score! You're tacky and I hate you. It's 8-1 Knights. Tomas Kupak looks like the beneficiary this time. Adding his leading scoring stats for the Meaford Knights. Point shot comes in. Kopak there, bangs it at the side of the goal. And there, there, that was all it he needed. Kopech unassisted. Puts the Knights up by seven. Christina, I only write down so many things to say when the Knights score, <laughs> and I'm running out of things. I mean, eight goals is a lot of things to follow up on. Behind the goal now, Demules looking to get on the scoring sheet. There's a chance, <gasps> save made, and it goes in! Trickling through! I believe it's going to be Lowe who gets that one, and immediately some action on the South Muskoka bench. That's Anthony Hool, who is coming into play now. Shibanu's night over after allowing the ninth goal this game.
And the Knights are putting on a clinic. Believe it or not, it is uh, it is quiet in this building right now as fans realize that these moments are few and far between to pad a lead quite this way. I also want to mention that way back in the first period of play, now you, you might remember that very first Meaford Knights goal that was scored. Well, as we were looking at the replay, a gentleman came over and tapped his hand on your shoulder, Christine. Uh, it turned out that gentleman was Mike Flanagan, Declan Flanagan's dad, who wanted to let us know and everyone else that he's very proud of his son Declan for now setting the new team record for points scored by a defenseman. He did that on the first goal tonight. He has since added more points on top of that. So Declan Flanagan's name might be in the Meaford Knights record books for quite some time. Always cool to see some history, Christine. It's very interesting. I used to play defense, but um, my, de my goal record was definitely not that high. <laughs> Uh, they don't usually look for high scoring but from the from the blue line, but <laughs> as long as you put a few other players on their butts, I think they were happy with you. <laughs> oh, I think I did that. Okay. <laughs> Save is made there by Anthony Houle, who is now in the game for South Muskoka. Goal tenny change after that latest goal. Knights again trying to find some more offense. Puck on the point. Biggs misfired there. Gets taken down. Crow has it now, and oh, they're turning back three on one here. Mitchell with some speed. He's got one goal already tonight for South Muskoka. Centered that one, and oh, big stretch by Larson to get the big pad across. And some applause from the home crowd here on that big save. Take a look at it on the replay, and that was a stretch and a half for Larson to come across. I don't think I could stretch like that. Not me anymore either. Nowadays, it's just a challenge to stretch from the couch <laughs> to the table to grab the beer. Back the other way. Now Salter with a chance. Backhander. And that one was knocked down by a high stick there. Calvert gets the late man on that one. And he's just letting Noah know that that's the reason why this faceoff will come outside the zone. Actually, they're going to bring it all the way back down to the night zone on this. Call. Clock is going to keep ticking down with a eight goal margin now. Knights get it out to center. Piper Post there. Now it's Lindblom. Able to maintain control. Lindblom comes over the line, takes a shot. That went off a body. Lindblom looking for his own rebound. Can't get there in time, but Simona got one off just wide. Simona again keeps the puck inside the zone. Knights have tagged up, but it'll be the shield carrying it out. Dowdy over the line. Tried to make a play there. Looking for it is to Conti. Knights carry it behind their own goal. And a whistle in behind the play there. Referee pointing over at Calvert Getz. And we'll see a power play opportunity for the South Muskoka Shield. They've had a one or two this game. A bit of a mountain for them to climb to get back into it, though, Christine. Just a little bit. I mean, they do still have the rest of the second period and all of the third, but. But it always starts with one anyway, but won't happen at least on this rush as the Knights get it all the way down the ice. And Anthony Hool has to watch out as that was Darcy Lowe with the short-handed pressure. Back the other way now. Dowdy shot just wide. Picked up there and fired down the ice by Flanagan. Caller got the puck ahead. This is Crow over the line. Crow has some trouble with it. Lost it in his skates, but tried to feed it back to Sorensen. Sorensen's got it now. Walks in from the point. Sorensen got it into the slot. And a quick shot there by Dowdy right on the doorstep. Was not fooled by Robin Larson. Puck went into the mesh, and we got a whistle. 
Short-handed opportunity for South Muskoka. And even on power play opportunities, the clock still runs in these situations. As there's a quick shot right at the side as Dowdy tried to bury that one. He's tied up now by Biggs behind the goal. Puck goes into the corner. Sorensen, he's looking for it. For the Knights, Flanagan. I think he might have gotten a stick on it and got it down the ice. Ool out to stop it. And one Knights player lost an edge there. I think that was Post. Now back the other way. Caller tried to make a move, but couldn't quite get around here. Down Reedy's. Now Post plays it off the half wall and got it down the ice. Knights thinking about a change here. Thinking about maybe a chance for Post. Post, though. Couldn't quite get it on the toe drag. Out at center. Knights again. Causing some issues. Biggs played it up into the mesh there. That's going to result in a whistle as the clock is going to tick past the eight-minute mark. And we want to once again say a big thank you to Amici's for providing the pre-game meal for the crew here at Rogers TV. If you're looking for the best pizza in Meaford, 519-538-6805. Give Amici's a call, especially this family day weekend. If you are got the family in town and you don't feel like cooking, Amici's, great call. Icing call against the Knights. That'll bring it all the way back down to their zone. Christine is a member of the Junior Farmers. She's doing color commentary with us here tonight on Rogers TV. Uh, tell us, what will the money that's raised tonight uh, as a result of this game by the Junior Farmers, what's that going to be used for, Christine? So for the Junior Farmers, our portion will go to help run um, other events that we do in the community. And then we also donate a portion of the proceeds to the Canadian Mental Health Association. Mm -hmm. Um, and then we're also going to donate some of the portion of the funds to the Brian Betts Scholarship Fund. So a lot of different causes within Junior Farmers are, are going to be recipients of the money here tonight. And, I mean, it's got to be amazing to, to look around the arena here tonight and see so many people in the stands and uh, realize that that uh, this means a lot to them, that they're, they're here to support this organization. And we're very thankful that they're all here to help help support us. And for people that are maybe watching this on TV after the fact, because, of course, this is a recorded game, if people want to reach out to the Junior Farmers, if they're interested in maybe joining, how, do they, how would they do that? So we have a Facebook page that they can follow, um, Gray County Junior Farmers um, on Facebook or Instagram. Um, and you can also Google Gray County Junior Farmers and the Provincial Junior Farmers Association of Ontario have a website that you can find us on. Perfect. And if you want to make any donations for... Any of those, oh, crossbar there for the Knights who come close to striking again as Flanagan has to head back. If uh, any of those uh, causes that we mentioned tonight where all this money is going, if they want to donate to the junior farmers, they can, they can reach out to you those exact same ways on the Facebook page, on the website. Exactly. Perfect. Back the other way now. Kopech backhanded that one. Nobody was home as the Shield get it out to center again, trying to get a two-on-one going. Sorensen, though, denied there by Simona. And now a whistle here. We're going to get a slashing call. This one, I believe, is going to go against Simona. The referee is going to lead him off. So once again, the Meaford Knights will find themselves shorthanded for the second time this period against the Shield. Crow is going to take the draw. Shield win it. Caller just inside the blue line. Has a little bit of trouble with it, and the linesman said that came out. Don't often see that happen at the blue line. Christine used to be a defenseman. You know you got to handle it very, very carefully right next to the blue paint. Yeah, that's a tough one. I mean, you're always trying to keep it in, especially when you're on the power play. Off the face off. Caller gets it over to Sorensen. He looks ahead. And now it's Mitchell. Mitchell leading scorer here. Walks out, makes a shot off the side of the goal. Turned aside by 
Larson. Crow plays it back. Collar. Collar's point shot kicked out. There's a rebound. That one doesn't get through. Now it's Darcy Lowe. Couldn't find the handle on it. Sorensen walks in, keeps it alive. Puck out. Everyone taking kicks at it now, and it's going to be Demules who wins the kicking battle. Will he win the foot race? Not this time. Sorensen comes back to help out. Demules looked like he was going to challenge Sorensen, but he was just looking for a break as he headed to the bench on a change. And a whistle at the line stops thing. Clocks keeps moving, though, now ticking towards the four-minute mark. And, well, the South Muskoka Shield hoping for a quick drop here so they can still at least get a face-off with power play time. Off the face-off, Stevens steps into it. Ten seconds to go with the man advantage. There's a shot save made by Larson. Now there's a lead pass. That one looked like it was intended for Reedy's. Went over his skate. Now Reedy's has it, though. Reedy's centered it. Salter. He was at the doorstep, but it went over a stick. That's center now. Stevens. Trying to find that puck. Reedy's pokes it ahead. Reedy's couldn't maintain, but now he's got it back. Big hit in front of the Meaford bench there. Calvert gets back. He's at center. He'll play it down inside the shield zone. And now it's going to be Dowdy coming back the other way. Dowdy had it knocked off his stick. Stevens collects it at center. Delayed offside against the shield. Gives the Knights an opportunity for Lindblom. He walks in alone. Lindblom save is made. Ool made that save. His first big test. And now here we go, one-on-one -on -one the other way. Crow trying to make a move. Crow couldn't quite get around his man. That was Simona who stood him up. And then Robin Larson finishes up with the easy save. Knights stay ahead. 9-1 here with... Well, about two minutes and 20 seconds to go in the second period of play. Christina, I'll ask you this about the Junior Farmers. Do you know about how many members you, you guys have in your organization? How many people are a part of it? So the provincial uh, membership number is well over 200. Um, well over. And is growing. Mm -hmm. um, and locally we have, um, I'm pretty sure, just under 20 members this year, which is big. Um, the last couple years we've been growing. It's, it was a little tough there during COVID, but mm -hmm. we're increasing. And it's uh, obviously, it's not an easy thing uh, in this day and age to, to take over to take over a farm for young people. I know that there's a lot of concern in that industry that, uh, that the family farm is in trouble, but from your perspective, what do you think around here? It seems like around here, there, there's family farms are still going as strong as ever. Yeah, there, uh, there is a lot of family farms. The dynamic on them have changed a little bit. I mean, my family farm, a lot of us work off farm and then my dad is the main person who farms. So mm -hmm. we all still come and help. Um, and one day, hopefully we'll take over, mm -hmm. but I still work off farm right now. <laughs> still working on the, on the old family farm. <laughs> well, we definitely know that we wouldn't have food without farmers. We appreciate everything that that you and your family does and everything that the junior farmers do. About less than a minute here. And there's a goal right off the face off. I believe that was Wado who put that one in. That was a more subdued goal than we've seen here tonight, right off the faceoff. Adam Polak has initial control, and then, yes, it comes over to Tanner Wado, who finishes that one off for the 10th night school tonight. And now there'll be Tomas Kopak. Leaving it there for Polak. Polak bumped. Plays it back to Calvert. Gets at the line, and well, a little bit of a delayed offside oh. call there. They eventually got to it and Adam Polak has to be restrained by by his teammate Tomas Kupak here. I'm not sure what happened on that initial play if something was said but Tomas Kupak quick to step in and say uh, you know what we're up by nine we should probably just let that one go. 
Either way, cooler heads prevail. We did get a full stop there. And now the clock resumes. Unlikely. Unlikely we'll have this puck drop before the whistle goes to end the period. And sure enough, there it is. A late interference call against South Muskoka ensures that the Meaford Knights will start the third period on the power play. They find themselves now heading to the dressing room with a few words back and forth against the Shield, but nothing to worry about with a nine-goal cushion going into the third period of play. We will take a break. We'll be back with the third. You're watching Meaford Knights Hockey on Rogers TV. My Uncle Cheney was one of over 150,000 Indigenous children that were taken to residential schools between the 1800s and 1996. My uncle ran away from school wanting to get home to his mom and dad, and sadly he didn't make it and died of exposure. When Gord Downey found out about my late Uncle Cheney's story, he wrote Secret Path a series of poems that became an album, then a graphic novel, a documentary, and a concert. Gord met my family, and together we formed the Gord Downey and Cheney Winjack Fund. Together we are sharing secret paths and other reconciliation resources with legacy schools, setting up legacy spaces across Canada, and hosting events like Secret Path Week to inspire all Canadians to engage in reconciliation. action. Before he left us, Gord asked us all to do something. You're going to figure it out. Will you join us? Together we can make Canada a better place. Calling all journalism students. Omni Television is once again awarding scholarships to qualified students pursuing a career in third language journalism. I would really like to thank Omni for this opportunity. And as a Brazilian student, um, this has been incredible for me because I have really learned so much. Omni is home to a variety of locally produced current affairs programs and daily national newscasts broadcast in six languages. To learn more about Omni scholarships, visit omnitv.ca slash scholarships. Welcome back inside the Meaford St. Vincent Community Center where we are getting ready for the third period. The Knights of Meaford leading the South Muskoka Shield by a score of 10 to 1. Both teams just finishing up the second intermission fun on the ice surface here. Take a look at the standings in the North Division. Bradford Rattlers, of course, are still the tops. Only two regular losses for them this season 37 wins 76 points means they are guaranteed to finish first bill marie has second all locked up both those teams will get buys into the next round of the playoffs meaford as it looks like they are planning to play south muskoka in round one a series that would start here in meaford game one one week from tonight next thursday the other series would see Tamiskaming take on west nifising assuming that those standings are exactly the same as they are now by the end of this weekend. Only game for these two teams is against each other. They'll do that Sunday in Gravenhurst. Game two of that series would be played in Gravenhurst next Saturday night if needed. And then game three, if necessary, would happen right back here in Meaford. It is a best of three in the first round, but we still got to finish tonight's game. Knights going back to work. Croteau, a quick shot. Knights are on the power play right now. A late Muskoka penalty. The result of that, here's low. Top of the circle plays it across. Misfire there by Kelbert Gentz. Now it's Dowdy had his pocket picked by Croteau. Got it back to Kelbert Gentz on the point. He walks in a shot. That save made by Uhl in the nets. Kelver gets again. A little bit of trouble at the line, but he keeps it alive. Simona. That's Wado in the corner. Make that low. Low denied there. Puck get, gets shut off the side boards and down the ice. Less than a minute to go on the power play for the Knights. That one there. Played ahead. 
Demuel's got it up, but Calvert gets has to cycle back to his own zone. Now it's Kopech. He gets stopped up at the South Muskoka line. Simona. He'll be the next member of the Knights to try to gain the zone. He does this time. Carrying it in on the left side. Centers that one. A shot and a goal. That is a goal for Adam Pollock. Let's take a look at it on the replay here. Puck carried in by Simona. He'll drop it back for Pollock, who has the Richter find the top corner, makes it 11 to 1 for the Knights. At times. After last Thursday's game, when they put everything they possibly could towards the net and were denied so many times, it seems like tonight you sneeze on the puck and it might go in. Here's a chance again for the Knights. Polak right at the side of the goal. Big grin on his face as he knows he missed one there. Laughing back and forth with his teammate, Thomas Kupak. These two will be looked upon heavily during the playoffs to provide offense for the Knights. Goal scoring usually can come from anywhere on this Knights roster, but it does come from those two guys a lot. Biggs plays it ahead. Here's the Knights back on the attack once again. Sapino couldn't get that one to go, tries again. Got it across, Siebert, a shot. Looking to make it a hat trick. He scored two back-to-back -to, -back to end the first period. But it'll be 11-1 to here. Joined at the broadcast table by Christine Wyville, agricultural contact with the Gray County Junior Farmers. And Christine, we got to see the, the tire roll during the second <laughs> intermission. An event that uh, is, is just out of tonight's... Uh, festivities they don't usually do that here in Meaford but that looked like a lot of fun yeah we tried to come up with something that was a little bit more unique of an event and uh, was kind of related to agriculture anyways I did notice a couple of the Knights players did some tire flipping out there too just to build their strength for this last period this is the Knights now trying to get outside their own zone Zepino Send it ahead for Siebert. Siebert back to his feet. Looks on the point. There's Simona. Cross for Kelvert. Gets a shot. And Houle got the blocker on that one. Deflects it up and out of play. Clock ticking past the 16-minute mark. And a reminder that in the GMHL, any team with a six or more goal lead results in run time, which is what we've been in since 40 seconds into the second period this game. It'll be Reedy's to take the draw. One back on the point. Now Biggs got it across. Simona had a little trouble holding on, but he's got it back now. In behind the goal. Finds Biggs again. Biggs a point shot. And Anthony Uhl flashes the leather and gloves that one down. Maybe he could play baseball too. He might have enough talent <laughs> if he wanted to. And it does look like... Uh, well, there is a chance that they might have an early summer here at the hands of the <laughs> Meaford Knights, or at least the Knights are hoping so next weekend when the playoffs get underway. There's a chance now South Muskoka the other way. Crow, who has had a great game, wearing number 19 for South Muskoka. Two Crows on the ice, 17 the other one. Biggs has it now. The big man down the wing got a shot away, but that was denied by Uhl. Now it's Reedy's. He gets taken down, but managed to keep the puck alive. Collar got it up. Shield attacking again, but back on the forecheck to break that up was Reedy's. Knights get it out to center. Lindblom there. Pro pushes off him. Made a play to Collar. Collar now. Left wing, shot, save made by Larson, who will very easily collect this one and let the clock continue to tick away.
If you're wondering about the jerseys that the Meaford Knights are wearing, well, unfortunately, uh, they will be auctioned off immediately following this game here tonight. So if you're watching at home, uh, unfortunately, the opportunity to purchase them has passed. Is this it, Christina? It's just this run of jerseys? Will there be any special jerseys that will be available? Or is that it that's on the ice right now for people that want to buy them? That's it, unfortunately. Just what's on the ice right now. That's exclusivity right there, people. Hoping to see lots of money raised off the sale of these jerseys. Not that would be ideal. It's not the uh, first special jersey game this season by the Mefordites. Of course, a couple of weeks ago, they wore special purple jerseys in memory of Ashley Clock. And the jersey sales that night topped over $12,000. Calver gets at center. Has that puck stolen away from him? Downing now. Lost it in turn now, and it's Post who'll bring it back. Piper Post. Drop that one there. Croteau in. Croteau has control behind the goal. On the point, Calvert gets back to Croteau. Post. Try to play it out. But it'll be the shield that pounce on it and carry it through the neutral zone. Over the line, Downing had his pocket picked. Post picks it up there. And a two-on-two -two back the other way now. Post down the wing. Post. Kicked it up to his stick. Post centered it. It was intended for Croteau, but he'd already made the decision to go to the bench. Shield trying to carry it out. That was Mitchell, who could do nothing but watch Kopak take it away. And now it's Polak. Polak finds a man ahead that's Biggs. Biggs over the line, but one step just offside was Wado at the line. And that's going to result in an offside. Under 12 minutes to go as the clock still ticking down here in Meaford. Knights came into this game having won six of their last seven. Opposite story for the South Muskoka Shield. They did have a surprising win a few weeks ago against the Temiskaming Titans. An overtime victory for them. Not sure anybody saw that coming, but immediately went out and lost their next two games by a combined score of 22 to 4. So I think they kind of left it all on the ice in that Titans victory. Here's Maybe a, just a little bit. <laughs> here's a chance again for the Knights who center it. And another save made there by Uhl as they'll get it out to center. Biggs in behind his own goal. Knights get it around the boards. Not out, though. Dowdy held it in. Crow has to leave the line to go and pick it up. Crow played it back. Missed everybody. It's collected there by Flanagan. Flanagan. Across the line. Wool has to come outside and stop it up behind the goal. Shield don't get it out. They will now, though, as Sorensen carries it away. Sorensen in over the line. Thomas Kopech there to pick it up. And now Kopech back the other way. Got Adam with him. And Polak, nothing happening there. Polak now tries to center it. Broken up by the shield and carried it to center. Doughty over the line. Doughty behind the goal. Still maintains control. Looks for help. Finds a man coming in. Reeves. Reeves a shot. And Larson made that one again. Look easy. Only beaten once, and it was early in the first. There's a chance. Side of the goal. That one took a weird bounce. Quickly leaves a shot, and that was deflected at the last second. Siebert ahead for Wado. Wado at center. Plays it up for Sapino. Sapino now tries to walk in. Fires that one wide. Held in at the opposite line by Calvert Getz. Goes off a stick way up into the rafters here. We'll get a whistle with 9.37. And one final time, we would like to say thank you to Amici's in Meaford for providing the amazing pizzas for the pregame meal for the crew of volunteers at Rogers TV. If you're looking for the best pizza in Meaford, call 519-538-6805. Calvert gets fired that one from the point. This is Stevens. 
Stevens now got to turn around and be sharp because there's Siebert. Siebert got that one across. Sapino, both the Sapino brothers in front of the goal looking for chances. Puck played back on the point. Now Salter. Kelver gets, walks in. That one went off a leg. There's Simona now. There's another shot. Reedy's make that Siebert. Went off a body, and that'll come all the way back out to center. Now Sapino. He'll try to gain the line now. Comes in down the left side. Sapino centered it. There's Siebert. Siebert is shot. Oh, -ho! Anthony Hool makes a huge club save. Denies Siebert the hat trick. Let's look at this one on the replay. You see the great pass to Siebert. And that flash of the leather there by Anthony Uhl to keep this game close by just 10. <laughs> There's Crow now. Takes a feed down the right wing. Crow feels the pressure from Biggs in the hit afterwards. Biggs gets around one man. Here's Biggs with some speed. Make that post. Post. There's a little backhander pass. Low. Couldn't end up finishing that one. Caller. Kicks it up to his stick. It's picked up by a teammate. And now, here's Dowdy. The other way. Oh. Scores. Long pass springs Dowdy, who had just enough real estate to get that puck up to his stick. And convert it past Larson. We'll see it again. Caller just one hand on a stick. Gets immediate help from a teammate. There's that long pass. Dowdy over the line and is able to find Larson on the short side. I'd say that goal has taken the crowd out of it, but they've been respectfully quiet for the most part since, well, about goal number seven. Knights back to work again. They wrap it around here. Sapino takes a whack at it, but it's broken up by the shield. Shield back the other way now. Gaining the zone. There's a shot by Crow. He falls up on his own rebound, but Larson will keep it out. Six and a half to go in the game. Both teams likely already thinking about Gravenhurst on Saturday to wrap up the regular season. South Muskoka hoping to have some more personnel on the bench that day. Puck from the point shot right on to Larson. And Larson makes that save. Again, clock will continue to tick down. Mitchell. Bump there is downing. Knights get it around the board. Salter picks it up. Has a couple teammates with him. Salter maintains control at the line. It's flipped out by past the mule. Salter again trying to find it. At center, Simona. He's there. Ahead for Demules. Demules tried to make a move, but couldn't get the puck to go. Legacy now back on the point. Sees two shield coming at him, so he moves the puck. Now Simona. Some members of the Knights getting some extra ice time tonight with this big lead. Shield with some speed. This is Mitchell. Mitchell tried to backhand that pass through. That was broken up. Downing now. Tied up with Simona. Make that Salter. Siebert. Siebert pinned there. There's a quick shot. Mitchell ripped that one just wide. That top corner labeled on that one. Now it's the Knights. Here's a chance. That was shot wide. That was... Sapino centering feed gets out to Kelver gets on the point his shot high and wide Sapino there to pick it up Sapino on the half boards had it stolen from him Flanagan breaks up the attempted odd man rush the other way Sapino back to get it and ooh like Mitchell got dumped there 
No indication from the officials on that one. Now Siebert bumps with his man, Crow. Siebert trying to make a move here. Cycles it back. Here's Siebert walking in. Scores! Blaze Siebert gets the hat trick. With the mesh here in Meaford, a little hard to get the hats to the ice, but a few fans tip their caps to him, and there's a few cowboy hats to be tipped in the stands tonight as Blaze Siebert gets the hat trick. So the Knights restore their 10-goal lead. As now Adam Polak may be looking to add a little bit more to it. His attempted shot doesn't get through there. Knights have it behind their own goal. This is Grateau moving it ahead. Grateau over the line. Grateau takes a bump in behind the goal, but Calvert gets still. Shield. They will get this one out, unfortunately out of play, and that will result in another whistle with about two and a half to go. And this game quickly drawing to an end. Christine from the Junior Farmers, but uh, your thoughts on what you've seen here tonight and uh, what you think it's going to be like when the uh, Knights get into the playoffs. Any high expectations? Do you think we'll see a deep playoff run? I would like to hope so. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's no mercy here tonight. 12 goals uh, over three periods. I'd like to see them go all the way. I think everybody in this arena tonight would love to see that. They love their nights here in Meaford. Thursday night, Sunday afternoons. Generally, this is the place to be when the Knights are playing. Shield getting it ahead through center. It's Doughty trying to make a move around Biggs. Simona ends up pinning him on the boards. Polak. Puck ahead. Here's a chance again for the Knights. A shot right off the crossbar. That was that was Wado who hit the crossbar on that one. Puck played off the end boards. Post to Polak. Now Wado. Polak tried to find it in his feet. Puck cleared but not out. Biggs held it in. Final minute of play in the game as Adam Polak has it behind the goal. Polak plays it off the side of the net. Tries to spring Caller the other way to the South Muskoka Shield. Caller, though, pinned there by Simona. Now Wado is in and as are, is Biggs to help break this up. And it'll be a three on two the other way. Shield jumps on the ice at the last second. Biggs tried to walk in with it. The big man looking for a goal here tonight. But it won't be lucky 13, at least not at this moment. 30 seconds in the game. Knights are going to go home happy here tonight, knowing that they've got one more challenge before the end of the regular season. And it will be against the same South Muskoka Shield. Shield walk out with one there. Larson got the shoulder on it. Again, Mitchell steps in. His shot went off the end glass. And that is going to do it. The Knights of Meaford on Gray County Junior Farmers tonight put on the green plaid jerseys and put 12 on the board against the South Muskoka Shield. They will have, well, they will have a little bit of time to celebrate this one, this victory here tonight, as they get the night off on Friday before they head to Gravenhurst to take on the South Muskoka Shield 
on Saturday. That will close out the regular season. And as expected, we expect to see both these teams back here next Thursday night for game one of the opening round GMHL North Division playoffs. Uh, assuming, of course, that uh, the... Um, that the Buford Knights can get past the South Muskoka Shield, waiting for them on the other side, waiting for the winner of that series, will likely be the Ville Marie Pirates. A lot to be decided still. We do know Game 1 will be played next Thursday night in Meaford. Game 2 will be played in Gravenhurst. And Game 3, if necessary, will be played next Sunday back here in Meaford in front of the home fans. On behalf of... Christine, it was an honor to have you join the broadcast here tonight with the Junior Farmers. We're going to keep our fingers crossed for you and for all the uh, money raised from the jersey sales tonight. But again, if people are interested in joining the Junior Farmers, if they're interested in sending a donation to you guys to keep doing the great work that you do, how do they find you? You can find us on Facebook at Gray County Junior Farmers or on Instagram, or even you can Google us because there is a website. All right, Christine, we appreciate it. Support the Great County Junior Farmers, also the Canadian Mental Health Association. Big thanks to them. They were in the building here tonight. My name is JC Coots on behalf of Mark Perry, Daryl Van Slack, and all the volunteers at Rogers TV. Thanks for tuning in to Me for Nights Hockey. We'll see you for game one of the playoffs. Due to the length of the preceding program, we now join the regularly scheduled program already in progress. The haters of Mere Gord chooses to say, that's the best I can do with it. But you get the point. I've made my choice. I believe in the word of God. I believe there is a God, and I've given my life to him. That may not be your choice, but it is my choice, and no matter what you say and what you do, I'm not changing my mind. That's what it says. So this is the kind of conviction that sets the believer's faith firmly upon God's side. It's a firm foundation. The question is always on what side are you? Third and last, ask for less. Ask for less. And yeah, this is a tricky one. And, and I believe the, the all-in philosophy. I'm, I'm, I'm all in. When I give my life to Jesus, I'm all in. When I'm in, I'm in, says the actor. I'm trying to say, if we ask someone or consider ourselves taking small improvement steps rather than huge steps, it might help to bring healthy change. In other words, make a small request to someone or to yourself. And over time, ramp up to bigger ones. So let's consider reading the Bible. I could simply say to you, you know, you got to read this Bible. In fact, I think you should be like one man and read it every week. Well, that'd be a little heavy load for most people, don't you think? But if you are not someone that reads the Bible every day, it might be a good start to say, I'm going to read four minutes a day. That's not a big deal. And you might start enjoying it so much you add six minutes and 10 minutes and 12 minutes and 30 minutes and an hour over time. Or you might say, uh, you know what, we should all be praying and we should at least spend two hours a day in prayer. But if you're not praying, that's a pretty big task to lay on somebody. But it might be a good idea to spend two minutes a day praying and then Ramp it up. Four minutes and six minutes and 10 minutes and 20 minutes and it's not long until you get into this. But you do it in small steps. 
So I'm just simply saying, sometimes behavior will change if we approach it properly and not put a heavy load on. Just take small steps. There's an interesting portion of scripture found in Hebrews chapter five and six. In verse 11 and 12 of chapter five, the writer indicates that he would have liked to speak of deeper things to the people of God, but he couldn't. Because the people he was writing to were undisciplined and their spiritual condition prohibited them from understanding more than just the basics of the teaching of the Word of God. They should have been far advanced, but they didn't have the disciplines. So in verse 13, the Bible says they were still in the milk stage of comprehension. Verse 14, only those who had grown and matured could understand beyond the milk stage. Chapter six, verses one to three says, it's expected that God's people will indeed take steps to move beyond the elementary teachings of God's word. It's expected of us over time to move beyond it and advance our spirituality and advance our understanding of God and his teachings. So let me read it. Verse 11. We have a lot more to say about this, but it's hard to get it across to you since you've picked up the bad habit of not listening. By this time, you ought to be teachers yourselves. Yet here I find you in need of someone to sit down with you and go over the basics of God's word again, starting from square one, baby's milk, when you should be on solid food long ago. Milk is for beginners and experienced in God's ways. Solid food is for the mature who have some practice in telling right from wrong. Verse one and three, one to three of chapter six says, so come on, let's leave the preschool finger painting exercises <laughs> on Christ and get on with the grand work of art. Ah, it's good. Grow up in Christ. The basic foundation truths are in place. Turning your back on salvation by self-help and turning in trust towards God. And then he gives some examples. Baptismal instructions, laying on of hands, resurrection of the dead, eternal judgment. God helping us, let's stay true to all that. But there's so much more. Let's get on with it. Wow, so I've had a lot of opportunities to grow over the years. Spending time in the Word of God and developing prayer. You wouldn't expect me to be just uh, kind of like a start out behavior. And if you've been a Christian for a while, we wouldn't expect that of you either respectfully. God would expect us to have grown. But if we're kind of stuck, we just simply ask you to take some steps forward. Take some little steps, and little steps will help you get to bigger steps. So, 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 tell if necessary. Make your statements. Do this. Go to consequences if necessary and it's appropriate or else. But don't just do that. Add to your arsenal. Showing the behavioral gap between what is said and what is done to bring alignment. Ask a question to people and yourself rather than make a statement to gain understanding of how and why behavior contradicts. And finally, encourage small steps at first to improvement and over time, move on to bigger steps. um, I'm just asking you to think about it and consider where you're at today. And this will help you raising your children. This approach will help you raise your children. This will help you 
raise a husband? <laughs> just kidding, just kidding. <sighs> We're all work in progress. What, what we want to do is just understand that this is how it works, folks. And if we do these steps, as we mature and grow, we'll actually grow out of and into some really great behaviors that is going to set you apart from many people in this world. And you won't be blown this way and that way with what is happening in the world. We do have a behavioral crisis in our world. And somebody's got to bring, bring it into alignment. And guess who those people should be? It should be the people who know God and have the word of God to guide their steps. So will you stand with me today? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you today for the word of God and how it speaks so practically for all of us. We would all say we want to be like Jesus and more like Jesus. We've been saying that for years. We sing these great hymns and the great choruses and and they tell us of this vibrancy, uh, spiritual experience, and we want that. But when we're out of alignment with what we believe to be true, help us to take steps to get in alignment so that we don't end our lives with regret. Help us, Lord, to become all that you want us to be. For those of us who are here today or listening that have never given their life to you. We just pray, God, that you will help each one to pray a simple prayer, a prayer of commitment like, Lord Jesus, come into my life. I make you the Lord of my life. I give my life to you today. Help me to serve you in this troubled world. Help me to be a good Christian. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for being here today. Okay, all right. Yeah, you'd want, you, yeah I can take it. I can take it. I think. Okay, one, two, three. <laughs> okay, half, the, half you can't see them, so that's, that's good. Okay. <laughs> half the Rogers TV viewer response line. Email us or connect with us on social media. Honey, I'm Carolyn King, and I'm a member of the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation and the creator of the moccasin identifier. Philip Cote, an artist in Toronto here, took and redrew uh, real moccasins. We're starting over with the children. The idea is that they would research whose land their school is built on, near, or what treaty area they're in. And the educational kit that we have has all that information in there. And the children just, like, I love it. 
my dream is that this province will be covered with moccasin identifiers within the next decade, and they will forever know whose land they're on. That's the goal. Educate and awareness with a nice, simple little program called the Moccasin Identifier. Welcome to the traditional, ancestral, unceded territory of the Stalo people. The Stalo are people of the river. I'm so thankful for the courage and resiliency of our ancestors who lived on this land since time immemorial. Each of us have gifts from the Creator, and our Creator has a plan and purpose to be fulfilled in our territory. As we embrace our traditional teachings, we can lead the next generation into the fullness of what our Creator designed. Our shared history reveals a broken relationship. But as all Canadians commit to hear truth, acknowledge injustice, we can learn to walk in our traditional way, let's amount, with a good heart and a good mind. Then all of our lives will be enriched. Kwasai. My name is Matthew Rutledge. I'm a Sissy Scoop survivor, born in Red Lake, was adopted from there to Toronto at the age of four. A lot of our brothers and sisters, uh, family members, got separated from each other. That was the government's goal, to break that connection from brothers and sisters. It basically, taking the Indian out of the child. Right now, they're still trying to find themselves. Originally, my birth name is Harvey Halverson. In my high school days, teens, I was trying to fit in to society. I knew I was First Nations, so I didn't know who I was inside. I think later in life, I started that journey. I am proud, and it's not my man, but who I am now. I love life, who I am. Do you want to play for KW Braves or Team Canada? Team Canada. When you play, who's your coach? You. You. Do you guys like having me as your coach? Yes. Yes? Yes. If I come sit, do you think we can answer their questions just like you guys just did for me? Because you guys did a really good job. We have to do our interview first, then we can go play the cross. How about that? Turn our listening ears on. Ready? Oh, they're on. Okay, we're ready. Lacrosse is one of those things where it's always meant a lot to me and, and my family uh, really supported me growing up, but it's been really cool to share this experience with my family and my kids. Putting that jersey on the first time was extra special. It took a, an extra second to look at what I was doing and, and think back and think of the people who helped me get there, especially my wife who was home with these guys while I was off chasing lacrosse. So for everybody to be here, it's been extra special. My son loves the game and, you know, he loves watching. and. My daughter, hopefully the same thing, she'll love to come out and watch and support and then I get to coach and I get to be a part of it as well. What's your favorite part about this, this trip? Winning all the games, the going to new places. What about you, Ben? Playing games. Seeing how happy you know he is when he comes out and watches the games. I know you want to play. How lacrosse. excited he is to go play lacrosse. Even watching you know guys throw the ball off the wall. I just, it's something that I think he's very passionate about, and it's definitely something that I, I feel that's rubbed off. I was always you know encouraged and, and motivated to have fun. My dad didn't play lacrosse, so when I'd get in the car after the game, he would just ask you know did you have fun? And he didn't know any better to say like what I did wrong. It always, you know, motivated me and, and I enjoyed going to lacrosse. So I know as a dad now, I'm just going to always focus on making sure they're enjoying whatever they're doing. <laughs> and, um, so it's important for me to make sure, you know, whatever they're doing, it's fun for them. That's nice, Benny. Something I've learned in lacrosse is hard work. I think everybody is here in this position because you know they've been the hardest working players in all of their collective teams. And something I'd pass along to them is your dreams can come true as long as you put the time and the effort in. We're in the Maple Leaf. It's something that's a big honor. It's something I'm very humbled to do. And uh, I hope that they can look back on this. I know how special it was to me to share that with them. This is the first time I've been able to play for Team Canada and uh, came a little bit later in my career. If it happened earlier, these guys might not be around. So the fact that it came a little bit later made it extra special that my family's here. It's great that my family can share this with me. Who's daddy? 
Maddie. Maddie Beers, right? <laughs> what number is he? Two. Number two. And what do we say when Daddy's on the floor? Oh, can I block go? Go, Daddy, go. Love you, buddy. Does my equipment make me look like a superhero, Ben? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Good answer. In a backyard ring for my family and I and that's where my sister and I you know spend a lot of time that's where I sort of learned how to play hockey today will be a little bit different a little bit more you know special it's a real hockey game so I'm really looking forward to it hey guys we're the Van Frankfurt twins at TV place today we're here for the Ottawa 67's first ever outdoor game the guys grew up playing on outdoor rinks in their community, so let's see what they have to say about playing on an outdoor rink this size in front of a huge fan base. What were your thoughts when you heard that the 67s were going to get to play in their first outdoor game? The timing of the game is really special because after that game, we're going in the long break. So for all the players, all their family are in town. It's crazy just me being a 17-year-old kid and being from here in my hometown. You know, big opportunities to play out here. You watch the NHL team everywhere around the league play those games. Suddenly, you're the little boy who has a chance to be part of it. It's not every day this happens, so a bunch of, bunch of guys are really excited for this. We never played hockey growing up, so you're going to have to explain to us the ritual of going to play in an ODR from start to finish. So when you leave the house with your skates over your shoulder to the time you get home when the street lights are just coming on. Usually you'll just pop a toque on, uh, grab your gloves, stick and skates and you'll just walk over to the rink. You'd put your boots on, you'd carry your skates, it'd be a cold, cold night for sure. Either find a bench or a snowbank, just try to tie up your skates quick and then put your gloves on so your hands don't get too cold. No matter who you're with, it's always a good time, whether it's your, your best friend, your, your sister like me, or strangers in the park, you know, you never know who you're going to be with, but it's a fun time for as long as you can before your parents say, you know, get home for dinner or you got to school tomorrow or something. It's just the love for the game that uh, a lot of boys and girls have, and uh, it actually, it's what makes good hockey players good, just playing out there for hours, it really develops your skills. I grew up playing with my brother in outdoor rinks. Every year in the Christmas break, we get a little shinny game with our whole family and friends that come out and it's in our blood to be competitive so we keep it <laughs> a little you know chippy out there for most of the canadian it's something we did in the past play outside that's how we build we're canadian and proud of it considering you grew up playing on the rinks around the community what does it mean for you now that you get to play in a 67 sweater at td place on an outdoor rink and the night after the sends got to play on that same rink just a lot of historic moments that have happened and uh, leading up to this moment it's pretty cool it's pretty special, you know, I've been to a couple Winter Classics and here I am playing in, in one myself. We went to the game yesterday, pretty nice for our ownership to get us tickets. I don't think Brian Adams will be coming out for our intermission, but you know what, it was, uh, that was pretty cool to be a part of. The 67s are very active in the community and you give back a lot to your fans, so can you tell us what you think this means to them, having an extra special game like this just before Christmas? A lot of fans messaged us and said they're excited to come watch us play. We really like our fans and we know what they do for us, so this is going to be a big game for them. Junior hockey is not just about hockey. It's good for the young men they are to realize the impact, the role model they can be. In a city like Ottawa, the 67s are a very old tradition, you know, 50 years now, and it's an honor to play for the team. And at the same time, you know, it brings the community together. I know there's gonna be a lot of young hockey players here today, and as an older guy in this team, I love to see the little guys come and support us because, you know, I was one of those kids, and now that I can be a mentor or a leader for them, I just wanna, you know, show them a good experience. It's important for us to build great value inside of our organization and to make sure our players are close to the people and that is a good life lesson. This might be the, the only chance in their life to play in those games, you never know. So uh, I hope they will enjoy the experience.
lot of expectations when you wear the flag for Canada. One of them is excellence in your play and your behavior, but the other part is the outreach and giving back to the international community. So I hope they really appreciate what this means on, on an international stage in terms of growth of the game, importance to other countries, and take that with them. We like to do these types of practices with, with different countries. It's, it's good for both programs. There's a lot of you know logistics and a lot of planning that goes into this tournament. So for them to take the time uh, out of their busy schedule and support us and help us and just come out here and have a laugh and throw the ball around with us means the world to these guys. It was a huge surprise <laughs> for the team. He, he came up to me and was like, yeah, I organized a practice for Team Canada. A team full of like, the best players of the world. And I couldn't believe it. And to come out here and have a practice with him was a huge opportunity. It was almost like a pre-team dance at the beginning where you had all the Canadian guys were here, all the Austrian guys were here. It was kind of nice when they started going down and they're just simply playing catch. That's sort of a simple exchange, but it's, it's kind of cool to watch that sort of happen naturally and, and then, you know, it sort of grew throughout the whole practice. Shoot. So come get wide, take run by the goalie, and just throw it in the effort. They were able to coach us, like all small details, like from the goal, how to take shots, where to look at the goalies and everything. And I think it's a huge, huge learning, only in one hour. It's, it's tough to put into words on how much this means to Austria lacrosse. These guys that have a wealth of knowledge and the experience, our players from Austria are like sponges. They, they, they take all this info in and there's no doubt in my mind they're going to go back to their country and uh, share it with the rest of the lacrosse world over there. These are great memories for the Canadian guys as well. You don't remember the practice where you were fine-tuning the penalty kill or working on your breakouts and stuff. It's the time you came out and got to share a laugh and, and some passes and play catch with some people you've never met before from parts of the world that you've never been to. And it's all about those encounters that, that make this tournament and this game so great. They care about the game and, and they care about the growth of it. And I'm proud of how they embrace this part of what it means to be for Team Canada. Box lacrosse still isn't the most popular sport out there, but hopefully practices like this they can bring back to Austria and they can teach you know their fellow players some stuff and continue to grow the game. One thing that uh, stands out in my mind is the practice player of the day. These guys gave away some uh, shoulder pads to a guy on our team that you know didn't have proper structured shoulder pads. So these guys noticed that it's not easy for them to get gloves or pads or helmets or whatever it is for lacrosse. I'm very uh, surprised and thank you for the gift. It's great. <laughs> it was great to make practice with you guys. That simple thing that they showed gratitude towards one of our players and the look on his face that made my day. For me, his expression and how happy he was, was worth it all. I was lucky enough to play for Canada in 03 when this whole international indoor tournament started. And to see the growth in every four years, where the tournament is now from back in 03, you're seeing the fruits of those interactions. The health of the countries and the volume of the countries and, and the overall growth of the program has is, is been good to see over the years. Me being a, a newer coach and uh, newer to the, this uh, World Championship, but I look forward to kind of seeing that growth within, you know, Austria Lacrosse and these newer clubs. And I got to say thank you to you guys and uh, Glenn for uh, giving us this opportunity. So thanks, Bob. If we can't win this thing, we're hoping Austria does now. Yeah, we'll see him in the finals. <laughs>